Once again, we come to functional and assurance security requirements. And uh, again, um, it's, it's an important uh, consideration to, to keep in mind. I, um, I may be stressing this more than is represented by questions on the exam. You may not um, see an awful lot of, uh, uh, of questions asking about this. But it is important to clarify in your own mind when you are doing security. Uh, what is it that you are doing? Is, is this directly some tool that is keeping you safe? Or is this a tool that assures you that what you are doing is, in fact, keeping you safe, doing what you expect it to do? And uh, this, is, this is important. Um, uh, so in, in a sense, uh, although you may not uh, see it uh, directly in questions on the exam, they may not ask you, be asking for this wording, uh, very often you will get questions that turn on this concept. Um, you know, what is, this, what is this doing? It's not strictly a separation um, between uh, security operations and security audit, which tends to be the distinction that we make in business. Uh, but that um, is a, a, a reasonably good way to uh, think about the distinction as long as you don't push that analogy too far. Uh, but I, again, you know, there are the tools that we use, that we, we think of as security tools. Uh, your antivirus scanners, um, your firewalls that, that prevent... Uh, People from coming in your your physical walls that uh, prevent people from physically entering uh, the location, um, the locks of, of various types that control access, um, uh, and uh, you know password controls. You know all of these are part of our functional security requirements, and that's the way that we tend to think about security. And unfortunately, I mean, uh, that's all important. That is, that is important. But um, we sometimes neglect to ask ourselves the question, you know, is, uh, is this working? Is it doing what we uh, expect it to do? Is it doing um, what the, the job that we set it up to do? Um, but also, um, is it in fact giving us any protection? Uh, a couple of clips ago, uh, I, I mentioned uh, somebody who uh, built asymmetric encryption into uh, the particular technology uh, that uh, his company was, was promoting. And unfortunately, I mean, it did nothing because it's uh, the, the tool, uh, the application that was being developed, was being sold had no need for encryption of any kind. And, uh, you know, so basically you've got, uh, you've got some dead code in there where right? you've got uh, a function that nobody needs. Um, you, you have a possibility of introducing vulnerability simply by having some complex code in there that uh, nobody realizes is there, uh, that... Uh, isn't being used, but uh, may be subject to certain types of attacks. So, uh, it, in fact, is it not only is it not doing anything to improve your security posture, your level of risk, but in fact, it is uh, introducing a a level of risk. It, it may be a small risk, but it is uh, an added risk, and why have any added risk when you, you don't need to? So we need to have the assurance 
that what we are doing is uh, benefiting, that it is reducing the level of risk, and uh, an understanding of um, what we've got. Um, the uh, the functional tools, as I say, you know, those are the ones that we we think about. Um, and you know, if if we are thinking about security, we tend only to think about audit, and audit is is not necessarily the only uh, part of assurance requirements. Yes, it's a big part of assurance requirements. Um, but uh, we need to, to look at our metrics. Our metrics are, are very often in that um, uh, assurance side of the requirements and, and making sure, you know, going right back to, to our pragmatic uh, security metrics and all the uh, uh, factors involved with that, choosing the right kind of metrics that, so that we do have assurance and, and are not just collecting numbers. Um, we, we need to uh, consider this. We, we need to look at uh, what we are doing, what tools we are using, what our intention is, and then how do we assess? What is it that can uh, give us assurance uh, that can validate our expectations, that the tools that we are using, the functional assurance requirements we are setting up, are, in fact, doing what they're supposed to be doing, are working, are functioning as uh, either they were intended or that we expect them to. Sometimes, and, and we've talked about you know, a number of instances where we we have an expectation. Uh, things like the um, uh, virtual private network. And, and people tend to, you know, ping on that word private, not realizing that that is private, not in the sense of confidentiality, not in the sense of encryption and, and protecting and uh, keeping the, uh, the information in transit safe from eavesdroppers, but um, in, in assuring, uh, uh, you know, that, that kind of assurance is not there because the private means a private network in terms of management, that we can do management things with it, but an awful lot of uh, virtual private networks just, you know, don't have encryption, so they don't keep traffic confidential. Um, that's not the level of privacy. That's not the type of privacy that is being given here. So when we have a tool, we need to know what we expect of it, and does that tool, in fact, deliver on our expectations? Or should we be choosing another tool?